Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for sitting down with me to talk about the nexus between Homeland Security and, and secure documents. To backtrack a bit, back in January 2008, you laid out your top five goals for your last year in office, office, and your top goal was to protect the United States, of course, from dangerous people. But to achieve that goal, you repeated your commitment to the 9-11 Commission recommendations, that for, and also um, those recommendations that revolved around identity verification and document authentication. And in those top five goals, you stated, the first one was prepare for the implementation of the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative, including developing and issuing the enhanced driver's licenses and real ID. Second was to create an interoperable architecture for the TWIC card and WITI and real ID. And third was to capture 10 prints on U.S. visit and achieve database interoperability between the FBI and State Department and DHS. Clearly, what is most interesting to me is that secure documents and IDs were not a stated mission of the Department of Homeland Security like counterterrorism was. However, you linked the department's mission to protect the U.S. from dangerous people with that idea of secure documents and IDs. You made it a really high priority. And in addition, you even created a screening coordination office. Why, why did you do that? If you think about one of the main goals of Homeland Security, it's to make sure that people who are dangerous are not allowed to either to enter a country or to move around in a country and get on an airplane or get into a sensitive building. And one of the critical ways you determine if someone is dangerous is to determine what their identity is. So that if you have a dangerous person who's masquerading as an innocent person, that creates a risk and a vulnerability. The key to being able to maintain security is the ability to be confident that when you let somebody in because you've cleared them, to know that they are in fact the person who they represent themselves to be. And I might say that beyond just the obvious counterterrorism element, there's also a whole issue with respect to identity theft, where the ability to have secure identification is the cornerstone to protecting every family's assets and their uh, ability to function in the modern uh, transactional world. So I think that uh, the issue of identity management, identity security, and documentation security are the cornerstones of homeland security in the broadest sense of the word. And so um, you created a screening coordination office. Could you just tell us uh, why you did that um, and sort of the, the vast mission of DHS in regards to identity? Well, the idea is to recognize that in the end, in many cases, documentation issues and identity issues are different parts of the same problem, which boils down to how do I know you are who you say you are. Now, that comes up in a lot of different ways. It comes up when you want to employ somebody to see if their status is legal. It comes up when you want to admit somebody to a building to see if they belong there. It comes up at the border. It comes up at the airport. It comes up at the docks and at the ports. The idea was not necessarily to have a single card that covers all these missions, but to have a degree of interoperability and coordination so that people could use a card in a number of different types of scenarios. For example, I have a passport card. That'll get me across a land border but it would also get me onto an airplane or into a federal building or a nuclear power plant. So the ability to have a comprehensive strategic vision of identity was the rationale behind the screening coordination office. And, and what do you consider to be, you had so many programs um, in regards to secure IDs and documents, what were your biggest accomplishments? Do you, do you feel like you fulfilled your mission? Well, accomplishment number one, we got the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative <clears throat> done so that by this June, to come into the United States from Canada or Mexico, or the southern part of the hemisphere, uh, if you fly, you'll need to have a passport. And if you come across a land border, you'll need to have a passport equivalent. That was a big accomplishment and a, a real redemption of one of the commitments made after the 9-11 Commission report. Second, we are now virtually at 10 fingerprint uh, capture for all ports of entry. It's already been implemented at the consulates. Uh, when I left office a couple of months ago, I think we were more than halfway at the ports of entry. Again, that's a huge step forward. Uh, the TWIC program is supposed to be completed early this year. We were about 80, 90 percent of the way when I left, so that's almost a, a job that's been completed. Real ID, I think, is still a little bit of a longer process. Um, I think the tools are there and the capability is there. What's going to be important is whether the public commitment is there to carry through on one of the core recommendations of the 9-11 Commission. And, you know, Real ID is about a, a particular, it's very specific about it, a particular <coughs> characteristics of a secure document. Um, were there quintessential elements you see projected into the future as to what a secure document would look like? I think it's pretty simple. 
first of all, you've got to begin with the breeder document. So what are the things that allow you to get the secure document in the first place? And that means you've either got to have an underlying document that's secure, or you have to have a way of checking databases to make sure that when someone comes in with a birth certificate or a social security card, you can check behind that to see that the person is legitimate and their identity is in fact accurate. Once you have the breeder documents or the qualifications in place, the next step is you have to have a card that is robust in terms of security. That means it can't easily be tampered with, it has a chip, it has various other kinds of features that are resistant to forgery or counterfeiting. Third, you want to have something that ideally can be read uh, in a way that links up with a database. So the Western Hemisphere travel cards have an RFID chip so that the chip itself doesn't contain the data, but it allows you to call up on the computer from a database the information that matches the traveler. These features, uh, secure uh, breeder documentation, uh, secure actual card itself, and then ultimately the ability to connect with the database are the main elements of a secure document. And let me just add one thing. I sure. think we're already on the verge of the next step, which is the ability to take your PDA, your personal data organizer, and make that your secure identification by combining it with a thumbprint or some other kind of biometric that would be unique to you so that you'll be able to use actually an electronic system to verify your identity. And then we'll have the convenience of being able to integrate identity and your electronic uh, database, your electronic organizer, in a single device. So we'll have security and facilitation on you at all times. Exactly. and that's Real-time facilitation real -time and Real-time facilitation, real-time security, and, by the way, convergence with the Internet. Because so much of what we transact now is over the Internet uh, in a wireless way. And, of course, those transactions require identity, too. So this is, this is going to happen. Uh, it may not be next year, but it's going to happen in the next 10 years because the logic is compelling because everybody wants to know that when they transact business with somebody, they know who they're dealing with, and because everybody wants to protect their own identity. And the only way to do that is to make sure someone else can't pretend to be who you are. Right. So uh, when you take it to the policy level, where does the U.S. need to be to assure that we provide adequate leadership in the area of secure documents and IDs as we move forward? What do we need to be doing? Well, I believe the best thing the U.S. can do is what we tried to do during the last administration, which is to create a market for this kind of document and device. Because if you do, and if you can set a standard that is the gold standard, I can virtually guarantee the private sector will go there too, because the private sector faces the same risk in transacting business as the government does. They want to know they're not going to be ripped off or they're not going to let somebody into their facility that's dangerous. So once you have created enough of a market uh, so that people are comfortable that the standard is clear and that there is, in fact, demand for this kind of product, my prediction is it will wind up uh, rolling out across the entire economy, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Thank you. That's excellent. Great. I appreciate it very much. Good to, good to do it. Thank you.